This year, the number of college graduates in mainland China reached 11.79 million, most of whom were unemployed upon graduation. Double. Were unemployed upon so, in 14 years, the amount of college graduates doubled. No doubt. I mean, well, presumably. The roles did not double. In fact, with AI, it, they might be even lower. So who knows? I upon graduation. I returned to Zhengzhou for a year. This year, I have interviewed for many positions, including reporters, translators, live broadcasters, teachers, etc. To sum up, I can say low wages and high energy consumption. This year, I have not been able to find a job that offers a double day off, pays enough to cover the working hours, pays overtime, or strictly abides by what? Cover the working hours, pays day off, pays pays enough to cover the working hours. That's savage. Pays enough to cover the working hours, pays overtime, or strictly abides by labor laws. As far as the working environment in Zhengzhou is concerned, all you find is live broadcasting or sales. It's not that I'm demanding. Overtime has become the norm here, and I don't dare to leave at the end of the day. When I was recruited, it was written in a job description that I would be a teacher, but in fact, it was a sales job, not even related to teaching at all. On the recruitment advertisement, it was written that the consolidated salary was 1,000 to 2,000 per month, but it turned out that the base salary was 490, which was still floating. Recently, an article titled A Girl from Another Province Died in My Rented Apartment has been widely circulated on Chinese social media. The article tells the story of a Ningxia girl who graduated from a top ranked university in China and eventually died in her rented apartment. She was not found until about 20 days later. On August 19th, a reporter from a Chinese media outlet contacted the local <clears> public security bureau. The staff responded, it has been verified that this incident did happen. The place where the incident occurred is under the jurisdiction of the Qingdu branch and said that the case was being handled. On August 16th, the WeChat public account Zheng Guan published an article about this woman. The article said she is 33 and was born in a remote mountain village in northwest China. After much hard work, she was admitted to a top-ranked university in Beijing. At that time, she was the pride of her family and of the village. She majored in accounting but never found a suitable job after graduating. She has taken the civil service examination in her hometown, Ningxia City, several times and has consistently been ranked first in the written exam. However, because of her family's lack of social standing, she was rejected after the interviews. In April of this year, she came to Xi'an and rented a single we are kind of living in that era as well, right? I mean, you can be extremely capable, even in the best. I mean, knowing people and being rich matters so much more than being capable. Single apartment for $1,400 borrowed from others by her mother. She lived an extremely frugal life, spending no more than 70 cents on food or anything else. The woman last contacted her family via WeChat on April 20th to borrow money. After May 20th, she did not go out, and there was no sign of cooking at home. In late June, a foul smell came from her rented apartment, and a property management broke into the apartment and found her body. Quote, phone records show that she did not talk to anyone. She died in extreme loneliness, end quote. The article said that the county where the women lived did not get rid of property until 2019, and there is still a severe phenomenon of flavoring boys over girls. In rural northwest China, if girls cannot go to school, they will be arranged to marry early, and they cannot change. In rural northwest China, if girls cannot go to school, they will be arranged to marry early, and they cannot change their fate of poverty. However, this woman has had good academic performance since childhood. No matter who mentioned her in the village, they always gave her a thumbs up. She was the hope of the whole family and of the village. This article has been forwarded and commented on by many netizens. Many people said that they felt suffocated after reading this article. People think this is the third year since China announced it would eliminate poverty and become a moderately prosperous society. A girl who has received higher education starved to death in her rented apartment. The reality in China is hard to accept. Due to the soaring unemployment rate, civil service, which offers stable jobs and generous benefits, have become popular in recent years. As a result, the competition for civil service examinations has become unprecedentedly fierce. The tests often involve many unfair components, making hiring people without social backgrounds difficult. Moreover, there is still. I mean, more important than that, because sure, I understand that that people compete over the jobs that are available, but looking at the entire system, I mean, this is not a solution. Assuming there are like oh, only job for only jobs for like five percent of the people here, you you don't have a solution that you, they just compete over that. It's still a 35-year-old threshold in the Chinese workplace. It is difficult for people over 35 to find a job. This woman is already 33 years old, and her future what? employment prospects will only diminish. This article. Over 35, there's just no job. You can't get a job. But that's just some extreme ageism. Article resonated with medicines who commented, quote, The door of the system has long been closed to ordinary people. There has never been fairness in China. Your birth has already determined your life path. End quote. Another citizen said, The CCP promised. Yeah. That's mostly true in the West as well. I mean, based on where you're born, your predicted lifelong earning pretty much correlated with that. Promised to build a paradise on Earth, but ended up building a hell on Earth. In recent years, that building a hell on Earth. In recent years, it has become indisputable that it is difficult for Chinese university graduates to find jobs. A Wuhan woman who graduated from university cannot find a job. She lamented that the economy is horrible, so she lies flat, waits, looks around for a while, and then slowly finds a job. I am a recent graduate. I graduated mid-June and found sales jobs at the end of June. I worked for a week and was fired in early July. Then I kept looking for a job, which is now August, but I still haven't found one. Why? Let me sort it out for you. When I was fired, I was still confident I could teach painting classes because I had a bachelor's degree in design. Then I cast a net at all the painting classes near my home and found that the summer classes had already recruited people in advance, so there was no shortage of people for the time being. Then I continued to cast a net at all the companies near my home. The HR department of some companies told me that they accepted fresh graduates, even those with no experience. So I went for an interview in Wuhan in July, which was so hot, but they said, sorry, we don't want people without experience. I went out for interviews lately in such hot weather and came back sweating profusely. I interviewed with more than 30 companies, but none of them wanted me. I have contacted my university classmates. Some of them have found jobs, but most of them have not found any so far. But these don't seem to be interviews in the traditional sense that you were maybe like called in. They seem to be just uh, in attending some kind of job there, or at least uh, based on this picture. 
Only can see are the bad and tiring jobs. With three days off a month and a salary of 2,800 yuan, that student even tried out for a job. But after working for three days, he realized that he was too tiring and quit, and he was not paid for those three days. So I couldn't find a job. This is not our problem. It is not because we're not good enough, but because the economic environment is terrible. Every company wants to cut costs and doesn't want to hire newbies without experience. So I decided to calm down and stop looking for a job to wait and see, and then slowly look for one later. After all, I will retire at 65 and I'm only 22. It is impossible. Oh, what? So that I won't work for 40 years in the middle. It is impossible. Oh, you need 40 to get uh, a pension, I, I, I imagine, right? Still, like, you're already planning your retirement? Well, this girl is lying flat. Many other young people are not. They have made small commodities to sell on the streets, but are yeah, that would that would be smart, but like not in this context. On the evening of August 14th, a netizen posted a video saying that at a scenic spot in the city, a security guard wearing an armband stopped the college students from selling small toys, and a conflict broke out between the two. The college students asked, "Who are you scolding?" The older man replied, "Do I need to explain what I said? Who do you think you are?" The college student replied, "I'm your father." The older man immediately pushed and shoved the students. The college students wanted to leave, but the older man grabbed him. Other security guards and passerby tried to persuade them to stop and forcibly pulled the two apart. The older man shouted behind the college students, "You can't sell things here." One netizen commented, "When college students are not even allowed to sell things on the street, it is time for everyone to revolt." What? Is that gonna be the the end? Some guy trying to sell wooden swords? Okay, let's go. A uh, glorious rebellion. Unemployment is soaring in China as many enterprises are closing down. The official unemployment rate for young people aged 16 to 24, including university graduates, is 21%. However, Chinese experts assesses that the figure may be closer to 50%. Chinese media Yeah, the thing is about unemployment, that it really only counts people who are looking for a job. Not those who are... Not those who are, like, uh, still looking, but, like, having no luck, or possibly giving up. He reported that the overall employment rate of Shanghai Ocean University graduates last year was only 15%, including 17% for master's degree graduates. Because of I mean, assuming the 50% figure is correct, then in those 14 years, then the available amount of jobs did not really go up. And it's and even if they did get jobs, I mean, it's kind of crazy that with, with like uh, their college education, well, assuming, well, I don't really know how uh, valuable it is, I guess, or how high, high quality it is, but they are not really looking for high-end jobs. They would be, I suppose, would be considered underqualified in some aspects. Because of the fierce competition in the job market, all the better jobs require a master's degree as a minimum requirement. Shanghai Telcom. What? Master's degree? But that merely exists to screw with people, right? But then you say, like, you need master's degree for any job? That just... That just perpetuates this, this scheme that everyone needs to get a high education. And if you don't get it, then you can't get any job at all. But if you get it, then you probably can't get a you probably can't get a job either. So what's the solution here? At Telcom University even recruited a master's degree student as a security guard, but the monthly salary was only two hundred and fifty two dollars. Some medicines lamented that university diplomas have become toilet paper nowadays. On I mean it was always just way to What's the nice way of saying this? Well, I think it's in, in the past it was okay. But now it's just uh, they're a little bit closer to uh, a scam because they are not delivering on the promise, right? And people spend a lot of time, uh, a lot of money to go. And if you don't get a job at the end of it, then it was a false promise. And you spent not just the, the time in college and university and your master's and whatever to get it, but like your entire education, all for not. No, no doubt. Uh, learning is very good, but... They, they can't even get a job. To, to be a security guard with a master's degree. That's pretty much it. That's all you have to look forward to. And the only reason why this, the, the security guard has a master's degree requirement is because it is just so abundant. <laughs> and people might argue that, okay, well, that just means that you should not get a, a job, maybe go for some kind of a, a skill or trade and that might might be okay but assuming that college degree is so abundant then they are going to keep requiring it even when otherwise it would be just completely meaningless and best also does this a lot you just need uh, degrees and credentials and whatever for stuff that really doesn't need it and also how are you gonna get experience <laughs> also if you reach the age of 35 i pre presumably it's it's before because that that's got to be the cutoff. If you reach the age of thirty five, then that's it, just unemployable by default. Especially if you like spend a, a crap ton of time just uh, educating yourself, you might be spending your entire twenties. And if you don't get a job, then uh, I guess good luck. On December fourth, looking forward 
to your joining. Year, the security department of Shanghai Taotong University published a recruitment notice. The position requires that the job seeker be a full-time graduate student at Shanghai Taotong University with a one-year training period. The school will provide a monthly subsidy of two hundred fifty-two dollars during the training period. A netizen said, "These days, the security guard has to have a master's degree, and even the University of Transportation and Communications undergraduate does not have this opportunity. What can you do in Shanghai with a monthly salary of eighteen hundred RMB? It's not enough to rent an apartment, and you can only live in a bridge." Apparently, live in a tube. Oh. Let's look at the story of this overseas student who returned to China and eventually became a delivery man. Mr. Mo graduated with a master's degree from the London School of Economics in 2021. He returned to China and came to Zhuhai, Guangdong Province, to start a business. The company he founded. I would have just stayed there. An education technology company. In July 2021, the company announced the completion of $168,000 in angel round financing, but it has been unable to operate since then. In September of the following year, Mr. Mo was admitted to Tsinghua University as a doctoral student. On the morning of March 10th last year, he wore a takeout uniform and showed his student ID card at the university's entrance. In one video, Mo Mingyong, wearing takeaway clothes, said, "Fate may knock me down, but it will never defeat me." Let me tell you something already. No, the boy in our sunshine rainbow is a very mean and nasty place. I don't care how tough you are, you will beat you to your knees and keep it a permanent matter. You, me, or nobody is going to get as far as life. But it ain't about how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. China. Okay, I heard that line too. The thing is. This, who is this guy? Anyway, this guy. What if things don't work out? Because this is easy to say, but what if? Yeah, but what about those who are like like right now thirty five? Did they not try at all? Did they just knock down and and never tried again? That's why they are looking for jobs and still at thirty five. So I think yes, there is a good chance that. Uh, the circumstances will a little bit uh, hinder your enthusiasm. <laughs> so this guy's like, you know, loving it right now, but what if everything just blows up? And in five years, he's gonna be still here. It's like, okay, I'm not giving up them. Like, and then five more years, he's gonna be still there. Does he have? Does we? Does he will still have this cheaper spirit? Like twenty years later, that's a good question. Because I would say this is useful, even if it's a little naive. But if his Efforts are not rewarded, then he's going to be discouraged. Come on. You, me, or nobody is going to get as far as life. But it ain't about how hard you can hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. China's economy. Because it's a bit of a. Yeah. A survival mindset that you only pay attention to those who kind of made it. And no doubt, do you think the, the, the losers, so to speak, had loser mindsets? Probably not. They were just not strong, or or maybe they they got lucky, or that's it. I mean, they are presumably at least in like sports, they probably put in the effort. They they were just not good enough, or they didn't have the right connections. And that's it. And know that the top dog is gonna say like, oh yeah, because I worked the hardest, not because like some genetics or something. Even though that's gonna be the probably the deciding factor when it comes to the very top. Economy is in decline, and the situation in Shanghai, the country's foremost city, is just as bad. A Shanghai netizen graduated from college in 2022. She originally had a good job, but she quit for physical reasons. She saw online news that more than 10 million college students would graduate and flood into society in July this year, and she realized that resigning was a foolish decision. The current employment environment is worrying. The current employment environment is more severe than when I first graduated in 2022. I only interviewed with two companies and successfully joined the last company. My last company was local in Shanghai. It was relatively formal in all aspects. The company paid various insurances to its employees. The employees had weekends off. They started work at 9 a.m. and finished getting off work at 5 p.m. It went pretty well at the time. I only interviewed with two companies and found this company. But now that I'm looking for a job again, I probably won't be able to find such a company. Now that all prices are rising, this lady went to many companies for interviews, only to find that the wages of graduates have been declining, and many companies don't provide insurance to their employees. She said her eyes darkened when she thought about the future, and she couldn't see hope. I went to interview with several companies, and many companies did not pay insurance. Some companies require single days off, that is, one day off per week. Some companies have one day off this week, two days off next week, a day off the week after the next week, and so on. This is the first time I have heard of this method. At that time, my God, why is Shanghai so irregular? The salary for college graduates is $420. That was last year's price, but it has become $250 this year. I thought this was too crazy. That's a massive drop. 20% in you know, like two two years. Oh no. One year. It has become $250 this year. I thought this was too crazy. This is 2024. Well, take it or just go, right? And when all prices are rising, how can the wages of our graduates drop to this level? That's all for today. If you like our content. And how much rent the the girl was paying? $1,400 for a, a single bed apartment? Something like that? So the only way she can survive this, if... Unless she, she rents a bigger place, I, I guess, that might work out. Or she uh, partners up with someone. It might work out then. And that's it. I wouldn't put it past the, the elites and the upper class. That is some kind of a... They probably don't care. But you, you can force people to uh, at least team up. But they're probably not going to have kids under such circumstances. Content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share it with your friends. We appreciate your support. See you next time. Hmm. Yeah, this is a big problem because 
It's not up to these guys that they need to look harder or be better, but the problem is systemic. There is arguably, there's nothing more these guys can do. And even if some make it out, some, some arguably will do, but most won't. So what the hell they are going to do?